Recently we celebrated a pretty important date, October 21st, 2015. For those of you who don't know, that's the date that Marty McFly and Doc Brown went to in Back to the Future Part 2. One of the best movies of all time! Check this out. A model Back to the Future hoverboard I got for my birthday. Ah! And seeing as how I'm constantly struggling to come up with ideas for themed videos, why not celebrate a belated Back to the Future day with a game based on time travel? Got a few of them here. Uh, can always talk about Star Tropics 2. I mean, I love the first game, and the second one is more of the same, but with time travel. Uh, I can always start talking about Ape Escape. It's a time traveling 3D platformer where you catch monkeys. That's always a good time. Uh, it can also be a bit cliche and talk about Chrono Trigger. I mean, everyone knows about the game. It's the quintessential JRPG that just happens to deal with traveling through time. Mario's Time Machine. Really? That one? Oh, oh no. I, I guess you can also call this the Halloween special. <laughs> Mario's Time Machine is an interesting title. Everyone is well aware of the CDI debacle that created massacres of the Mario and Zelda franchises, but Philips isn't the only company to mess with Mario. The software Toolworks is responsible for creating five Super Nintendo Mario edutainment games. For those who don't know, edutainment stands for entertainment and... Really? This is educational? Alright. Hell, calling this entertainment is also a bit of a stretch. The game begins with Bowser wanting to take advantage of his time machine. Bowser apparently has a time machine. And look at these Koopas' faces. This one looks like he's ready to kill. King Koopa's master plan is to steal artifacts throughout history to create his own museum. Evil. Mario hears Bowser gloating about his plan on a TV monitor in his warehouse, basement, or something? And the camera has this, like, extreme close-up of Bowser's face? I'm, I'm so confused already, and it's been 20 seconds. It's up to Mario to stop Bowser's plan to rewrite history, yada yada yada. The greatest collection of all time is nearly complete, and it's all mine! No one can stop me now. Bowser, the voice of amiibo collectors everywhere. I'm one of them. Once you start the adventure, you're dropped in a room inside of the castle with an item on five different pedestals. You select one of them and the text return to owner floats away. There it goes. And uh, now what? Um, I'm already stuck. After some vigorous button pressing, I got the time machine to finally show up. You can choose any location out of a pretty substantial list as well as changing each of the four digits of the year, even down to picking BC or AD. After some vigorous button pressing on a calculator, that's a whopping total of roughly 20,000 years. Good luck! The other button that does something pops in a fill-in-the-blanks puzzle. The game really doesn't have much in the way of gameplay, so I'm going to call that a puzzle. Choose a blank, pretend to be interested in what you're reading for a second before looking at an online walkthrough because, let's be honest, done. I'm a genius. Luckily, this essay also tells you exactly where and when to go to on your time machine, making the entire ability to choose where to go entirely pointless. It's good. Alright, the essay is complete, time machine is configured, let's go return this apple! Surfing? Surfing through time? Oh, this is heavy. So, like, you have to collect 10 mushrooms and avoid the spike balls. Sometimes you pick up the mushroom, sometimes it disappears right before touching it, but you still get it anyway. And to escape, you have to surf into a whirlpool, but if you don't have 10 mushrooms or set your time machine wrong somehow, you're sent back to the castle and you simply have to fix the time machine and go right back to the water. The music is pretty nice, though. After all the trials and tribulations of just getting things set up, I finally made it to Cambridge! I think. Uh, can I talk to the doggy? Nope. Oh hey, perfect! A person! Hi, can you tell me where I am? Mario can speak in this one, apparently. This is Cambridge, one of the oldest universities in the world. Gee, what are you studying? Many disciplines of infinite fascination. Wow. I don't care. Do you want this apple or not? Ah, but good sir, I prefer my Macintosh. 
Alright, whatever. Who even asked you? I just met you and I'm already sick of you and your stupid no eyeball having face. I wish I can say I explored here on this massive quest to find the Apple's owner, but all it took was finding the one path in the same location I started in, and hey, there's Isaac Newton! I must publish a book of my discoveries and I cannot recall the origin of my theory of gravity. Gee, I can't imagine where you could find what you're looking for in a place like this. So I gave him the apple I have, he gets all excited, as evidenced by the pure joy in his face. I pushed the time machine ball button thing, and boom! Level 1 completed! I don't know what you're talking about, I feel plenty educated right now. You can probably do the math by now. There were five items at the start, I did one of them, there are four left. You gotta do the same thing four more times. Good! Firstly, gotta bring the shield to Orleans for Joan of Arc. I may command their swords, but Joan commands their hearts. Hashtag deep. Gotta bring papers to Da Vinci in Florence, a music sheet to Beethoven in Vienna, and the Declaration of Independence to Thomas Jefferson in Philadelphia. I know these are all very important people, but this is an edutainment game. I don't have time to read your pesky words, I just need my points. What's really odd here is after returning the main item, you can talk to someone else and they'll give you another item that does nothing. Seriously, I went out of my way to get something to replace what I just gave away, and the game doesn't change in the slightest. Imagine getting the 8 red coins in Super Mario 64, and Cooper the Quick is like, cool. Aw, oh, sweet! All five items are back where they belong. It's probably time for the first boss fight, right? Let's go! Awesome, five more items. I was hoping to continue this thrilling adventure. Okay, select the item, cheat on the exam, deal with the incredibly slow-moving time machine, play some Legend of Mario, a surf to the past, forcibly shove the item in the face of whoever is fortunate enough to not have a border surrounding them, rinse and repeat four more times. Hey, take a look at how long a level takes from start to finish. And... done. I love how the game offers passwords after every level implying that when I turn the game off, I'm going to turn it back on. Done! Again! Now there's a boss fight, right? I guess I'm not surprised! Okay, it's done! For the third time! Three is always the magic number, right? There's bound to be something new now. <gasps> it's, ba it's Bowser! Finally! It's time to dance, you big dumb turtle. Um, okay, the time machine popped up. I didn't do that. Overload. That's not a place. So the time machine crashes. Then there's a scene where Bowser falls in this forest next to this thing that I guess is a dinosaur head. But really, look at it. Whatever it is, it clearly does not want to be here either. Then an uncomfortably realistic dinosaur foot comes out of nowhere and squishes Bowser to mush. Credits. And hey, we got text that's floating upwards again, but now it slides in mid-frame. Software Toolworks saving their greatest technical achievements for the very end. That's it. That's the entire game. No changing in gameplay, no plot development, no challenge. You just do the same thing 15 times. You assist in the killing of Bowser. Credits. Now, believe it or not, every single game that the Software Toolworks developed for the Super Nintendo was pretty crap. Contain your shock. Mario is Missing is the most notorious, as it's the first game to also feature Luigi as the main character. Then there are the three lesser-known Mario Early Years games that legitimately try to teach kids basic math and English. And who knows, maybe some kids back in the day actually really liked these games. I mean, back when I was a kid, I played a lot of Mario Teaches Typing 2, and look at this. It's a monstrosity. What's kind of interesting as well is that all five of these games also got released on PC, while Mario is Missing and Mario's Time Machine also got a release on the NES. Now I know that compared to the Super Nintendo, the original NES can be considered a baby's toy. But you know what? I have a morbid curiosity here. Let's check out the NES version. Well hey, already the time machine looks a lot different and more Mario-like. That's a good start. 
The game begins with Mario and Yoshi heading over to Bowser's museum, presumably for the same reason as the Super Nintendo version. Yoshi, wanting in on the action, heads into the museum first without Mario. Oh, hey Bowser! <laughs> Bowser- Ah! 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 That'll, that'll show him. <laughs> the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. You guys, you, you all know the drill by now, yeah? If you liked the video, toss me a like and also subscribe because that helps me and the channel out greatly. You can also follow me on Twitbook and Facer for your social media needs. And there are more of my videos right over here in the center. I gotta give a major thanks and shout out to my premium Patreon supporters, Kodiak Polzer, Mustard Pig, Ben Saunders, Kuhn Van Bake, Alex Downs, and Jord van der Veen. These guys help support the channel directly, and you are all awesome for doing that. Thank you so much. I think it's time for me to go now. Have a happy Halloween, and don't take any candy from weird strangers like me. Bye bye